very good evening one and all and uh, thanks for uh, I mean, joining today's uh, online series uh, of introduction to rockets and satellites and um, this uh, my name is dr jay kumar venkatesan and uh, today i'm going to discuss about uh, just uh, giving the refreshment of the course of some of the few terms we will be constantly be discussed about the space environment because the space environment is like a major concern it's like for rockets and satellites and also any of the systems uh, that is exist to be existing today you know like uh, because of uh, the environment you should know about the environment for any physical systems uh, uh, so uh, the environment is a uh, placed a major role in understanding about uh, uh, any systems engineering so, uh, today is like now i'm going to give an overview of uh, efforts uh, and also the how the solar cycles and the gravity and uh, neutral atmosphere how it is uh, and ionosphere and the geomagnetic field how it works and also the plasma and also in the radiation this uh, phenomena you can see in the overview of uh, efforts of uh, space environment it's like outgrazing in here vacuum you know it's like absolutely nothing it's like a vacuum and uh, the atmospheric drag and uh, also there will be like a chemical reactions plasma induced charging and the radiations damage of micro circuits and solar arrays and the sensors single event upsets uh, in a single digital devices uh, and also the hyper velocity impacts as you know the hyper velocity impacts is like you may be constantly hearing about there is like a space junks of orbiting around the earth and it, it, it is going to get conjunctions and also it's um, it's a great a major threat to the active satellites so so the, the, that will be creating the great impact so uh, we have to we discussed about the how the hyper velocity impacts it like for example any damage the satellite subsystems or maybe the oh, maybe the one mm uh, one centimeter uh, cube or uh, some small object that can impact with the hyper velocity uh, with an impact of uh, with a high velocity it can penetrate any of the active satellite into the damage so this will be creating a very great threat to the active satellites and you can see the next is like a solar cycle the solar cycle affects all the space environment so solar instantly is highly variable and if we, i mean like variability caused from the distortions of the magnetic field it's caused by the differential rotations and also you can say like indicates of the sunspots and also the solar flares so it's these indicators of the sunspots and solar flares so it may be constantly it's more it's only distortion in this so that uh, it can keep constantly variable and uh, you can see like there will be like a long term sun solar cycles in this is maybe you can we can we can measure in this and um, sun solar minimum is like 10 to 150 uh, solar the max it's going up the solar flux we will measure with the uh, with respect to of uh, radio emission lines and also it's related to the variation of eu and um, and uh, the measure of the effect of this sun on the our atmosphere it's a uh, uh, it will be desired by this and also the measure of the solar flux units is like 10 to the power of 22 atmosphere millimeters square so it's like it's uh, 50 to it goes up to uh, you know like um, it goes uh, to 50 solar it goes to vary to 50 to 240 it goes as some solar as a max the short term in the solar cycle index is like a geomagnetic index you can call it the daily average of the maximum variation in the earth uh, uh, surface of magnetic field is the middle middle altitude uh, and also this kind of the latitude you can say like uh, that will be like um, it's a it's a zero means it's quite it's a uh, 15 to 30 it uh, means active and uh, 50 means the major solar storm is happening around goes about and uh, the gravity is the common phenomena is like you know we are on the earth surface you now we feel like 9.8 meters second square uh, you know the, 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 the gravity is on the surface but it varies when it goes to the different altitude and the different masses and the different places you can see about the very beautiful thing is about the microgravity the microgravity it means the you know the the satellites uh, orbit or in the free fall they are accelerating the radio which was the earth 
at a rate of a free fall. You know, the deviations from the zero gravity, for example, like it must be a drag that will always constantly exist in that how we can calculate in this in the first in this formulas. And, um, you know, the gravity of gradient, you can call it up uh, gravity gradient with respect to the different position and the orientation. You can say like um, X, Y, Z. So here the spacecraft rotation is like uh, the rotation is about just on uh, y axis you can look at in the spacecraft rotation so that's how that is like a quadrilysis forces in x y and z and the atmospheric model is a neutral atmosphere you know the turbosphere is uh, is very from the zero approximately very zero to 120 kilometers rise in this is it is a well mixed of 78 percent of nitrogen and 21 percent of the oxygen and you know the troposphere is very uh, zero to approximately 100 kilometers and warmed by the earth as heated by the sun the stratosphere you can see 10 to 50 kilometer has an heated from the above surface and absorbent of uv is and by o3 you know there's the very preventive layer that sort of o3 is playing a great phenomena to protecting us from uv okay so if o3 is not i don't know like we allow today or not so it's uh so that's why we have to the a lot of climate change initiatives are working on to protect the um, O3 and uh, the mesosphere it's, it slides in 50 to 90 kilometers and heated by the radiation from the uh, stratosphere cooled by radiation into the space you know uh, this like mesosphere is like intermediate layer it's like a, uh, there's like a radiation from the stratosphere and cooled in the by the radiation into the space so it's a uh, it's a mixed phenomena is happening in mesosphere that is like a thermosphere it goes in it lies in 90 to 600 kilometers very sensitive to the solar cycle heated by absorption and uh, uva and a neutral atmosphere varies with the season and uh, the time of uh, delay you can look at that the atmospheres uh, the layers of the earth atmospheres is begin here you can see the troposphere and uh, it also goes to the stratosphere and mesosphere and thermosphere and then ionosphere and magnetosphere so uh, there will be like the constant variation temperature and the pressure and uh, and it it's uh, varies with the altitude so because uh, this uh, atmospheric phenomena will determine and uh, the satellite applications and uh, kind of this systems which we need to use in space systems and you can see the density latin altitude model is like how the density is keep varying with respect to the pressure and temperature so you know it will be determined by this you can use the case the Boltzmann's constant constant and the m is the average molecular mass and it with respect to the height and uh, of the things you can look at up to the 120 kilometers is like uh, the the density uh, altitude model and there will be like an atmosphere gases like at a higher altitude is like what was to break down into war by uv and uh, the primarily the war farm 18 to 90 kilometers to 500 kilometers so uh, it and the hydrogen and helium beyond 500 kilometers and kinetic energy of O atom at 7.8 kilometers per second in fire travels enough to break the molecules of the bond into one, two, or two electrons. It's like a O is a highly reactive and destructive to the whole spacecraft. And uh, you know, the temperature of the Leo is increasing with the uh, altitude. Atmosphere expands uh, when high, heated by the high ultraviolet solar max. And the Leo densities is approximately 10 to the power of 8 particles per centimeter cube. So most of the uh, uh, international space stations also is in the Leo and also uh, the CubeSats are lying in uh, Leo. That will be like uh, most of the technology demonstrators, small satellites like CubeSats and all the placed in, in a Leo. So uh, we have to study in this how the how radiation, the atmospheric. So then you can see the atmospheric models like we have to use the most common method is like a mass spectrometer and incurrent uh, scatter model it's like the uh, incurrent scattering model it's like based on the measured data it's required the a and f and demand as an input and uh, use an average value of n and n naught and t in atmosphere as a function of the altitude instantly the gives the varies from the factors of 10 and uh, you know the aerodynamic drag is like uh, drag you can define here with the, with the change in resting time and also the mass of the object under the surface area 
So uh, looking into this, uh, there's like a ballistic coefficient with respect to U, and uh, U is the density of uh, the atmosphere, and velocity is uh, 7.8 kilometers per second, and uh, at the drag, you know, like we consider like a drag coefficient and also the cross-sectional area that is important. The drag coefficient will be the Newtonian aerodynamics depends on the what air molecule does at impact. It it will be like uh, reflected and also it's an observed. This is this is the method of uh, how it's quantifying like oh is the particle is hitting uh, air particle and it's um uh it's like an um the surface area and this will be uh, then this bounded with an a uh, rare field in the atmosphere and uh, it, uh, typical drag parameters you can see for example like in the satellites it goes on land side see i mean drag coefficient is like a 3.4 to 4 and uh, we have the ERS at one and uh, Hubble Space the Telescope, the biggest one, you know, that's a you know, biggest telescope. Uh, this from 3.3 to 4 is a drag coefficient and also the echo satellite is a 2. It's like, so it's, uh, some of the CD is approximately is for the spacecraft, it goes in a 2.2 uh, to 4 for the spacecraft approximately. And we uh, for a over period of one year, you can see like, uh, a uh, kilometer within 10 and it will change in the max in the ranging from uh, 10 to 100 kilometers is also 10 to percent and 200 is 2 to 5 uh, it's like uh, under the swell as the minimum and maximum time and at the 300 you can go is keep increasing it's like uh, uh, it's uh, getting reduced and satellite lifetime the satellite variations are depends on the initial altitude and the solar minimum and max conditions is like at Leo design must be the composite effect of the drag because uh, it is constantly it is changing in the altitude and also there will be like a orbit raising and uh, you know the orbit decreasing it and positioning and also the orienting of the satellites position and the magnetic field effects the deflecting charge particles or solar winds you can say like southern Atlantic anomaly and creates the structures of the ionosphere and plasmosphere for example like a magnetosphere is an appearance like when you heard about the Van Halen bar radiation bulbs and uh, it can also be protecting the structures of uh, you know, the field of the keeping the magnetic field effects and uh, direct effects of the spacecraft systems like uh, avionics including the potential effects and power indicated the potential effects and uh, ground station and common models like in you know, a magnetic tracker uh, I mean like performance and also the sizing things and the structures and induced currents how it will be like and telemetry and data communications like a location and where will be the ground stations is uh, located in it and geomagnetic fields are the first comes from the three sources like the internal force is mostly 99 percent is currents inside the earth and uh, residual magnetism of the constant in the crust actually the external field is like a current in the magnetosphere so uh, it's like uh, internal field uh, varies slowly on order for 100 years is like a 0.05 percent and uh, the pole of the now magnetic field is lies on Siberia and uh, southern Australia you can look at here the um, uh, the the southern pole and the magnetic field it's uh, how the current is moving around and here the magnetosphere you can see in the center you can see in the the sun and it is constantly it's varying it here and uh, it moves to the not thermal non non-thermal continent this area and this is the magnetotail and uh, this is the magnetop pass they're changing this this is a plasma space and there will be like a shock so magnetosphere is the you know the earth's field existing in the 10 earth area and towards the sun terminates to the magnetic pass so here the earth field slow slows and also deflect uh, the solar wind and compress the heated and turbulent and there will be like a bow shock will happen it's a uh, polar field lines so the spec back in the night until did not close in and there will be like a neutral sheet surface of the discontinuity in the magnetic field implies the current flow in the surface sunward of the magnetic pass and eastward to the current flows and across in 
subsolar point the neutral sheet current flows in the west wall across the tail the external magnetic field you can see like there's like a uh, the external is a uh, generate in the ring of currents of a uh, solar wind and uh, the large variation with the time and milliseconds is up to 11 years of the cycle cells scales the variation caused by the magnetosphere in fluctuations and geomagnetic storms and solar activities and um, geomagnetic storms have been dumped in the large number of charges particles from magnetosphere into atmosphere there will be like ionizers and the heat the atmosphere altitude from 300 kilometers to over 1000 kilometers and persisting like uh, 8 to 12 hours after storm subsidize and you can see like uh, geomagnetic uh, coordination coordinate systems like uh, here geo geo geographic and geomagnetics and here the solar eclipse and also the solar magnetosphere how it will be changing the position and it can it can get in the field of uh, that influence that's in happening here the field strength will be constantly it so varies with the latitude here and the geomagnetic field is like uh, from those of the models like a uh, tilted dipole and a uh, geographic it's uh, mostly with respect to the geographic north pole it's a uh, at the leo of the satellites of low at the orbit so it's like a uh, where internal the reference like how we get more calculator and the mostly the field where the, we need in the minimum and maximum for polar caps and there will be like a uh, two peaks uh, near uh, north pole and two minimum near and uh, equida and uh, largest minima is known as the south atlantic anomaly much higher the radiation exposure at the leo the geomagnetic storm imposed the variations uh, from variations from 0 0.1 to, to it's like it's a start from 0 0.1 and uh, total field intensity is kind of uh, annual discharge of uh, uh, the field activity is like it's uh, constantly it's moving and the total in intensity is like it's moving and uh, with the projections here and you can see the how south atlantic uh, anomalies is like uh, there is a, like a reduced protection in the SSA allows a greater effect of uh, uh the energy particles and uh, electronic upsets and also the instrument uh, interfaces so uh the plasma effect to overview plasma is a gas made up of ions and free electrons in uh, roughly equal numbers causes electromagnetic uh, interface the spacecraft charging and uh, arc the materials effects the mostly the effects are the avionics and uh, the the upset from emi that will be like the power will be the floating the potential and the contaminated solar arrays the current losses the the here your gm and um, uh, see you can still look at that there, there will be like torque indicated from the induced potentials um, and uh, the materials uh, so sputtering from the contamination effects on the surface of the materials so the plasma effects you know the it uh, effects of the continuous like an optic systems like contamination changing as the property of uh, surface materials there will be like a propulsion it's like a thrusters firing and changing the shift in the floating into the potential contacting with the plasmas and uh, plasma gener generalization in general it is like uh, plasma is caused by uv and uv he, he, and also x-ray photoelectric effect of atmospheric models to break the diometric molecules of the bonds and eject uh, the electrons and uh, it goes in a increasing uh, into the atmosphere into ion density increases with the atmospheric density until the most of the uv has been absorbed uh, i mean for the 60 kilometer altitude the various dramatically with uh, altitude and uh, latitude and magnetic field strength and time of da and the solar activity the electrical you know the charged region of atmosphere is called the ionosphere the gas is an ionosphere is called an ionospheric plasma and uh, here you can look at that uh, leo plasma environment the balance between the increase in the density in increasing the absorption leads to the formation of ionized layers you can look at that and as i mentioned I explained in earlier about the layers of the atmosphere you see the f layer will be, will be there 
in uh, 150 kilometer to 1000 kilometers and the E layer will be in um, 100 kilometer to 150 kilometers and D layer lies in 60 kilometer to 100 kilometers. The transition range of ion free atmosphere is fully ionized the region called the plasma sphere. So plasma sphere is the density's uh, peak of uh, 10 to the power of 10 in the meter cube uh, to 10 to 11 power of meter cube at uh, 1000 kilometers altitude drops to 10 power 9 meter cube at its boundary. The outer boundary is called the plasma spouse. Here the density drops to 10 power 3, 10 power 5 uh, for meter square, 6 to vary to 10 power 6 to meter square. It's like the height will be this, it's a varies from, it's, it can be extended from, uh, you know, the it's this variation from the 18 hours, it's like a midnight to it's like 18 hours. And it's during the local dusk, it will be there will be like a dust bundle. You can look at that electron density here, the altitude, and also the density here. Uh, it goes in the night time, the electronics, the flows here. There will be like solar minimum, as I exp explained in the solar max here. Look at in the, the here, it's like uh, how the different into values and how the daytimes of electronics will behave in this of the density. And uh, here, the plasma pass and the height versus the local time. You look at the uh, in a in a day side, and uh, you can see the night side here, and this will be then the midnight. It's like we have the variations. So this will be dusk bulge here. It's like more and deep dark here. Uh, this like it's like in a dawn place. So it will be the maximum magnetic activity is index. You can look. Okay. And next is like ion concentration. It's like similar to the neutral atmosphere. It's like a D layer and also the E layer and also the F layer. So here, look, the, uh, it is like a peaks to it's like 300 kilometers and also the in, in night time, it's goes up to you know, 500 kilometers of F layer density drops. Actually, the peaks at uh, 300 kilometers and um, it's like at extreme point, it's like it goes to 500 kilometers. It goes uh, so it's a drop down. If the com composition of the transaction is like O plus and H plus. The ion concentration here, look at the altitude and it's uh, how it varies uh, from the different altitudes. It goes from 150 kilometers to uh, 650 kilometers. It's like the constant, it's constantly, it is like at the 350 kilometers of the international, above the space stations, like uh, it's beyond the 450, something is going up and it varies between 650. It's like lying in between and constantly it's moving around it is that there will be like high concentration is keeping fluctuating in and here the plasma temperatures is increasing from uh, 100 uh, approximately you know like it's a uh, goes to the um, uh, it's like a hundred thousand plus uh, Kelvin to at the uh, sometimes a uh, hundred Kelvin approximately sorry it's like a 100 Kelvin approximately at uh, 50 to 60 um, kilometers to uh, you know like uh, 2000 to 3000 Kelvin about 500 kilometer altitude there will be like electron temperature is like um, T you can say electron temperature is 4000 to 6000 and ion temperature will be um, what is like a 2000 Kelvin and uh, 3000 Kelvin. The density much higher than the solar maximum due to the ultraviolet rays. And here the Leo environment models like uh, internal international reference in ionosphere. So output IRI we can call it like there will be like a uh, electron density, ion composition and the temperature uh, here. The inputs called the uh, latitude, longitude and uh, altitude and the solar activity and the time. So the radio frequency transmitter is like the plasma transition from the perfect conductor to the perfect dielectric as a function of the frequency. The, <coughs> you can define as like a plasma frequency in this formula and uh, the dielectric constant we can consider here when it does it, it is goes uh, very higher than the initial here. Uh, uh, it is like uh, the plasma appears like a free space. If it is uh, approximately equal, then it is like electromagnetic waves cannot be propagated. So transmission from the below are reflected and transmission from within observed. So here for this uh, random variations uh, can be increasing random delays and also the phase shift. The spacecraft charging. 
at Leo, the spacecraft become negatively charged. Plasma is a dense but low, de low energy. Orbital velocity is higher than ion thermal velocity and lower than electronic thermal velocity here. And uh, electrons impact all the surfaces. Ion impact ramp surface only. So, geo spacecraft charge during the magnetic period of substrooms between longitudes corresponding to the midnight and uh, the dawn. The biased surface of solar rays increasing the floating of the potential. Charging effects is like the instrument for reading the bias and arc and induced EMI and electronic subsets. Increasing the current, increasing the current collections and uh, re-attraction of uh, contaminants. The ion sputtering and accelerating erosions of the materials and spacecraft must be designed to keep differential charging below the breakdown voltage or must tolerate the effects of discharging. The radiation. The radiation is the biggest phenomena and we have, we have to always consider this. Most uh, of the space electronics must be the space hardening and the radiation hardening. This. The most radiation effects that occurs in the energy deposition, you know, the both energy and type of the particle and the materials into which energy is deposited. Which, which definitions there are radiation damaging thresholds. For example, in many materials, uh, the total dose of uh, radiation is most is the critical issues, especially in the spacecraft and our engineering and also in satellite and rockets buildings. In, uh, in other circumstances, uh, the time over which uh, the dose is received uh, in equal importance, which can be like the different materials, it's like biological matter and uh, electrical matters, it uh, varies from different damage levels and there will be like uh, lubricants, hydraulic fluids, ceramics and there will be like uh, different glasses and polymetric materials, structural materials. Here you can there will be like uh, different data that will be measured in and here the spacecraft efforts this will be the highly high energy particles travel through the spacecraft materials and uh, deposit the spacecraft materials, uh, you mean like uh, uh, the high energy particles that travel through the spacecraft, the materials and uh, deposit the kinetic energy, displaces uh, atoms, leaves a stream of uh, charging atoms in the way. So, reduces the powers out, uh, output of uh, solar arrays, the cost sensitivity of electronics need to fail, uh, increases the sense background and the noise, the radiation exposes to the crews here. There will be like high energy radiations uh, definitions. It's like uh, for electrons, this was the level. For you can like it is uh, like then 100, you know, electric volt, and it's like megahertz. It's like the, the protons and uh, heavy ions. It's then the definition. There are the sources you can look at that in the Van Allen belts. It's like electrons and protons with the trapped radiation into the place. And uh, galactic cosmic rays, it's like interplanetary protons and ionized uh, heavy nucleus and also the proton associated with the solar proton events and van allen belts is like the terrarium belt around the earth made of electrons and uh, primarily the protons are with the energy is more than 330 electric volts it's like uh, maybe yeah, it's uh, two big zones in inner belt of uh, approximately 1000 kilometers to 6000 kilometers altitude a proton e and this goes in uh, 10 to the seconds and uh, outer belt it goes uh, 10,000 to 60,000 kilometers and uh, it goes this varies to 0.1 into, into 4.5 millivolt. there will be like different sources will be the accelerator of the low energy particles by uh, magnetic storms activity and trapped of the decay products and produced by cosmic collisions with atmosphere and uh, solar rays the concentration of mechanisms earth magnetic fields uh, concentrates on large fluxes of electrons, protons and uh, uh, some heavy ions. The radiation belt for the particles, uh, you know, the spiral walk back and also the fourth along with the magnetic fields and the lines. The ionized radiation belts of the lowest altitude in the eastern of the coast of the southern America 
and uh, yeah, the electrons and the pore and the fluxes uh, that will be like it will be keep uh, varying at uh, different uh, zones in you know the proton fluxes it can you can look at it uh, varies from 2 into 10 power 6 and it can keep it going on so here the five year of the dosage that will be like a natural environment and it will be five years of dosage of uh, the radiation it's like it varies with the altitude and keep increasing you can see the, the the gps altitudes and also you can see the synchronized altitudes and also the five times uh, synchronized altitudes that will be like uh, the free space the like it's like a flat only just uh, simply there's nothing will be there so it's like a trapped radiation belts it's like one well, how belts like that will be like a distance from the earth and it will be the trap in the, the one place it's called here and when all belt is the radiation stability is the inner belt is uh, fairly stable with the the changes in the solar cycle and it may change by the factor of uh, three as a result of geomagnetic storms and uh, loading the high energy electrons and the, in the outer belt the electrons concentration may change by factor of uh, thousand during the geomagnetic storms the standard models are like it goes in the required b and l so it goes to the the solar max of minimum and maximum solar and providing the omni uh, directional uh, fluxes of protons and uh, there will be like the there will be like the very different in variations and the solar still de degradation it's like a normalized efficiencies and it goes to on a micro volt it's like electron flu uh, influences it can go uh, uh, you mean like uh, the gallium arsenide and also germanium and the silicons the i mean it's a waste with the 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 it is goes with the type of the panels it's uh, it's it's it goes in this galactic cosmic rays uh, that are the primary interplanetary uh protons and ionized heavy nucleus that is the one uh you want and also the that will be like sources so for the outside of this like the other planet solar flares and nova and super explosions and quasars and the particle range the range of uh, the protons uh, electrons uh, uh, in aluminium there there will be like uh, particles that is goes uh, uh, i mean from the different region it goes to 0 0.1 to is a uh, max is goes up to the 100 it's like in uh, the there will be like electrons and also there will be like the protons the the, the particle energies we like there will be like a magnetic shield you can look at that magnetic equator and also you can see like uh, alpha beta gamma it's like the any ion that can you can uh, produce in the magnetic shield that is the it's like in a protective system the thing and uh, the solar protection proton effects is like the solar phase of ejecting the high energy hydrogen and other nucleus it will be various with the different type of the materials and also you can say the solar events of uh, that can be observed by the mars missions and also the hazardous and the particle energy that goes into the the galactic uh, cosmic rays and also the worst case of the solar phase in the, it is going uh, very high and that's that never will be happen it's like uh, uh, it will be in the limits and uh, the average radiation dose uh, from the large solar proton in even this will be like protons alpha particles in the total it will be like in the shielding and uh, there will be like the uh, Feynman model here and also based on the data from obtained from the 1963 to 1991 and um, and there will be like electromagnetic radiations uh, the radio is like 1 to 10 megahertz uh, galactic uh, uh, and uh, electromagnetic radiations the terminal noise the non uh, significant for single event and it will be visible and infrared it's like a uh, solar flux and also the heating so there will be like the significant ultraviolet it goes to the hundred to thousand uh, astronomical units goes to like significant surface of the chemistry there will be few references here and um, you can look at in the future Thank you very much for joining us today in the webinar. Please stay in touch, and there will be like several, the yeah, I mean, uh, very beautiful sessions that will be coming in future. Thanks a lot. Stay tuned.